Chris here and welcome to my channel. For today's Five on Friday, I'm going to bring to you my next round of five star predictions. So I usually do these every like three months. So I pick five, read them in the three months, or at least try to read them in the three months and then pick five more. And I took the last three months off. So the first three months of the year. So this is kind of my spring round of five star predictions. I was kind of burnt out on five star predictions and um, seasonal covers, which I'm retiring. You'll see more about that in a future video though. And so I needed some time to recharge and I like to kind of do themes. And I've been trying to specifically read off of my shelves. I don't know whether I'm going to do that this year, but I did last year. And at least for this round, these are all books I have purchased. My theme for this round of five star predictions was standalones. So as far as I know, all of these books are standalones. They don't have sequels, or at least they don't at this current moment. And they're all books I hold in different years. So I have one from 2020, one from 2021, one from 2022, one from 2023, and one that I hold this year. And no, I will never ever be able to tell you which ones I did where, except for maybe the last two years, because then I start to get confused as to which year I hold these things. But I'm pretty sure I've got one from each of those years. And that was kind of how I made the criteria of I was going to do a book per year. So first up, I'm going to mention my ebook. Um, because I do own a handful of those and I tend to forget about them. And the one I chose for this one is Irina's War by James D. Shipman. So this is a historical fiction and it's based on the gripping true story of an unlikely Polish resistance fighter who helped save thousands of Jewish children from the Warsaw Ghetto during World War II. So we're in September 1939. The conquering Nazis swarm through Warsaw as social worker Irina Sendler watches in dread from her apartment window. She's wondering how people who are desperate in Hungary are going to get food, including the Jews who would be forbidden from getting it. And she ends up getting dragged from her home one night by a Gestapo agent, Klaus Rhein, who offers her a position running the soup kitchen, which allows her to help these people out. So she's not exactly upset about that, though she really does not want to be working for the Germans. And she learns of a way that she can defy her employer and basically helps to smuggle uh, Jews out of Poland. So she is working with the uh, underground Polish resistance organization Zagoda. And of course, Klaus is unhappy because this is kind of happening under his nose, but he can't figure it out. And we're going to see how Arena manages to stay one step ahead of him. And I just thought this sounded very, very intriguing that it had a lot of elements that I really, really like in historical fiction. And I'm hoping that it lives up to my expectations and I actually love it and give it five stars. So that is my first option. And if I had to guess, I would guess that that is the book I hauled in 2022, but don't hold me to that. I will try to pop a date up on the screen. So I'll pop the one for this one here. And in the next book, I'll have it right below the book when I pop it up. I may do that for that one too. So yeah, I'll let you know what year it was hauled while well, editing Chris will when they put in words. Anyways, my second option is Counting by Sevens. And I think this is 2023. So I have read, is it Fish in a Tree? No, I've read, I've read something else by Holly Goldberg Sloan and loved it. And I've heard really, really, really good things about this one. So I'm hoping that this one is just as good. So it says seven things to know about Willow Chance. One, she's different as in strange and a genius. Two, almost everything interests her, but some things like plants and medical conditions interest her more than others. Three, she has learned the hard way that life can be extremely unfair. Four, she understands that family is what you make it and the people who understand you and choose to have you in their lives are the most important people. Five, she doesn't have a lot of friends, but she would do anything for the ones she does have. Six, she knows that the most wonderful thing in the world is feeling like you belong. Seven, her story will make you laugh, cry, and appreciate your friends, family, and the things around you in a whole new way. So I am very, very excited to check this out. Like I said, I've heard really, really, really good things and I've read something else by her. It's gonna annoy me that I can't think of it. Let me, let me look up her... Um, Goodreads page and I will see if I can give you the title of the other book that I've read by her because like I said it's going to annoy me that I can't think of the name of the title because I remember loving it and that's why I picked this up. Oh The Elephant in the Room. I read The Elephant in the Room and absolutely adored that and um, 
I really, really hope this one is just as good. And like I said, I've heard really, really good things about it. So I have quite high hopes. Think this could easily get five stars as it feels like the right kind of middle grade contemporary that's going to connect with me. So this is my second book I'm going to be reading for this round. Next, I'm going with The Unforgettable Guinevere St. Clair. And I think this is 2020. So this says, Guinevere St. Clair knows everything there is to know about the brain. She was the fastest girl in New York City. She already knows she's going to be a lawyer. And she wants to ride into her first day at her new school on a cow named Willowdale Princess Dion Dawn. Gwen is definitely not the kind of girl you forget. But that's just what her mother has done. In fact, Gwen's mother, Vienna, hasn't been able to remember anything after the age of 13 since Gwen was four. Gwen's father is obsessed with solving the mystery of Vienna's brain. But almost as soon as they arrive in Crow, Iowa, Gwen's hot on the trail of a different case, one she thinks can actually be solved. Farmer Wilbur Truesdale is missing, and there's only one person who could possibly know what happened to him. Her brand new next door arch enemy, Gazy Cotter. The more Gwen goes looking for answers, though, the more questions she encounters about Wilbur, about Gazy, but also about the mother she's never gotten the chance to know. So I feel like this is going to have some very emotional aspects with her mom not being able to remember anything before the age of 13 and a father who seems very focused on her mother. And then, of course, whatever mystery is going on with Mr. Farmer Wilbur Truesdale and where he's gone and how Gwen thinks she's going to find him. So this feels like it could have a lot of different aspects that will come together to make a five-star read with some contemporary aspects, some family aspects, some heart-rending moments, and then, of course, a mystery that may tie it all together. So this sounds very intriguing. I'm hoping it gets all of the stars. Then, based on process of elimination, I'm going to go 2021. I'm going to go with The Orphan Train by Christina Baker Klein. I believe I've read something by her and enjoyed it. I've heard really, really good things about a multitude of her novels, so I'm hoping this will hit as well. This is a historical fiction. I actually figured there would be more. I'm surprised there's only two. I figured most of them would be historical fiction, actually, because that tends to be where I get my standalones, but it says between 1854 and 1929, so-called orphan trains ran regularly from the cities of the East Coast to the farmlands of the Midwest, carrying thousands of abandoned children whose fates would be determined by pure luck. Would they be adopted by a kind and loving family, or would they face a childhood and adolescence of hard labor and servitude? As a young Irish immigrant, Vivian Daly was one such child sent by rail from New York City to an uncertain future a world away. Returning east later in life, Vivian leads a quiet, peaceful existence on the coast of Maine. The memories of her upbringing rendered a hazy blur. But in her attic, hidden in trunks, are vestiges of a turbulent past. 17-year-old Molly Ayer knows that a community service position helping an elderly widow clean out her attic is the only thing keeping her out of juvenile hall. But as Molly helps Vivian sort through her keepsakes and possessions, she discovers that she and Vivian aren't as different as they appear. A... Penobscot Indian, who has spent her youth in and out of foster homes. Molly is also an outsider being raised by strangers, and she too has unanswered questions about the past. Moving between contemporary Maine and Depression-era Minnesota, Orphan Train is a powerful tale of upheaval and resilience, second chances, and unexpected friendships. This is another one that has a lot of the earmarks I like in my historical fiction, and I've heard amazing things about this author, and I believe this specific book though it was a while ago, so I could be wrong about that. But I'm very, very curious about this. Like I said, it feels like it has a lot of the elements I like in my historical fictions to get five stars, so we're going to see if it lives up to the hype. And then the last book is definitely my 2024 option because I got it recently, and that is The World Famous Nine by Ben Gooderson. And the reason I have picked this is specifically because Ben Gutnerson is the author of the Winter House Mystery Series, and I adore that series. So I know I like his writing style, and I'm hoping that this one is going to be just as good as those. And like I said, as far as I know right now, this is not planned to be a series. Like, there's nothing that's indicating it's going to be a series. So it says that Xander Alencia's grandmother is the owner of the fabled Number 9 Plaza, the spectacular 19-story skyscraper. The Nine, as it's called, has everything unimaginable, including a massive Ferris wheel on its rooftop, monorail tracks suspended from its ceiling, and 25 glass elevators. But there's something evil looming in the shadows, and strange accidents start befalling the guests. When Xander and his friend Natasha come across a series of inscriptions hidden throughout the walls, 
of the nine. They discover that the clues will lead them to a magical object which protects the store's very existence. With the future of the nine on the line, the pair are determined to recover the mysterious object before the luxury plaza and its many guests are destroyed. Featuring an unforgettable setting and a larger-than-life cast of characters, here's a spellbinding mystery involving puzzles, art, and high-stakes adventure. So it definitely sounds like it has some of the elements that Winter House has with, like, the puzzles because they used to feature a lot of puzzles in the Winter House series. It looks like it has, um, let me find one here. You can see it. So it looks like it has full page illustrations, which I think are going to add to it. And if it has the mystery and the heart and the relationships that the Winter House series does, I see no reason this couldn't get an easy five stars. So these four, along with Irina's War, are going to be my latest round of five star predictions. I've got quite the eclectic mix in there, which is kind of what I was going for. And some that I hadn't thought about in a while, which is why I wanted to go back. I also was trying to avoid starting series, hence why I picked Tan alone. So hopefully all of these are definitely not parts of series. The only one that might be is this one, and that's because it's new, but at the moment I see no reason to believe it is. So there you have it. That's this round. I would love to know which of the five books I've picked are you most curious about, and which do you think would be most likely to get five stars from you? Let me know in the comments section below. All of my social media is listed in the description below if you'd like to come chat with me. If you've made it this far in the video, leave me star emojis, like this video, and subscribe to my channel, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!